Arrhenius acids increase the hydrogen ion concentration when dissolved in water. Arrhenius bases increase the hydroxide ion concentration when dissolved in water. For example, HCl is an Arrhenius acid because the H ion concentration increases whenever you dump HCl into uh, water. Similarly, NaOH is an Arrhenius base because it increases the hydroxide ion concentration when it's dissolved in water. These are very useful concepts, but they're limited to aqueous solutions. Bronsted and Lowry defined acids and bases differently from the way Arrhenius did. An Arrhenius acid increases the H plus ion concentration. An Arrhenius base increases the OH minus concentration in a solution. On the other hand, a Bronsted Lowry acid transfers H plus to something else. In other words, Bronsted Lowry acids are proton donors. A Bronsted Lowry base can accept H plus from something else. In other words, Bronsted-Lowry bases are proton acceptors. And remember that H plus is simply a proton. That is a synonym for a proton. We also want to remind ourselves that H plus and H3O plus are used interchangeably. H plus is faster to write. It's called the hydrogen ion. H3O plus is closer to reality. We call it the hydronium ion. And the hydronium ion is simply a water molecule with an H plus in addition stuck to it. And in reality that is what H plus does in water solution. In other words, a proton doesn't float around freely in water solution. It immediately sticks to a water molecule forming a hydronium ion. So, a hydronium ion is closer to reality, but hydrogen ion is faster to write, and the number of protons that are freed up in a solution turns out to be exactly equal to the number of hydroniums that are subsequently formed. So, whether we're counting them as hydrogen ions or whether we're counting them as hydronium ions makes no difference because the number is exactly the same. Let's give you a little picture here. Here's a hydrogen ion, and a hydronium ion is simply a water molecule with that extra H plus whoosh, stuck to it. You can see we started with one proton on the left, and now we have one hydronium ion right there. So the number of hydrogens and the number of hydroniums are exactly equal to each other. Typically, I'm just going to write hydrogen because it's quicker. The nice thing about Bronsted-Lowry is that Bronsted-Lowry concepts are not limited to aqueous solutions. They go, they broaden the range of substances that we can term acids or bases compared to Arrhenius acids and bases. Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry definitions overlap in many cases. So, for example, we can look at this reaction and we can say that the ammonia, NH3, is a Bronsted-Lowry base because it will accept a proton. We can see that on the right side it has, in fact, accepted a proton. So, NH3 is a Bronsted-Lowry base. We can say also that the water here acts like a Bronsted-Lowry acid because it donates a proton. It gives away a proton and we can see that after it's done that on the product side it has turned into the hydroxide ion in giving away its proton. Well we can also say that ammonia is an Arrhenius base because clearly by adding ammonia to water the amount of, check it out on the product side, the amount of OH ion has increased. That's what an Arrhenius base does. 
So, ammonia here is both a Bronsted-Lowry base, it fits that definition, and it also fits the definition of an Arrhenius base. So there's Bronsted and Lowry, and Bronsted and Lowry together might look something like that. Now, ammonia is not only a Bronsted-Lowry base, it's also an Arrhenius base, and if we put all three of those guys together, they'll look like that. A little fun with chemistry. Now, one substance can't be a Bronsted-Lowry acid unless another simultaneously acts as a Bronsted-Lowry base. A Bronsted-Lowry acid donates a proton. Well, if something donates a proton, something else has to accept it. So, Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases go around in pairs. Of course, the acid has to be able to lose a proton, and typically the base has a non-bonding pair of electrons that can bind with the proton. So, for example, ammonia, NH3, has a Lewis structure that is shown in the lower right there, and you can see that unshared pair of electrons is going to want to bind to that proton and, of course, we form the ion. Let's review. The hydronium ion, H3O+, is the species formed when hydrogen ion, H+, attaches to water. OH- is the hydroxide ion. Now, in the middle of the screen, I've got a couple of pictures here of a trike and the front wheel of a trike. Now, a trike has three wheels, so in this picture on the right, the trike represents the hydronium ion, where each wheel is an H, and then the rest of the trike is the oxygen atom. And I'm trying to make the point here that if you count up trikes in a room, big room full of trikes, count them up, 58 trikes, well, if instead you just counted front wheels, you'd still get the same number, 58. So whether we're counting front wheels, i.e. hydrogen ions, or trikes, i.e. hydronium ions, it doesn't much matter. Now at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to read this first sentence twice, and then I'm going to read the second sentence twice, and I'm going to skip certain words each time. An Arrhenius acid increases the concentration of H plus in a solution. Now I'm going to read that sentence again, but I'm going to skip the word acid. An Arrhenius base increases the concentration of OH- in a solution. Now let's go on. Bronsted-Lowry acids are proton donors, and Bronsted-Lowry bases are proton acceptors.